Hello guys, this video will be about assassination row in patch 9.2. In this guide I will explain the followings and first of all let us start with covenants. So let's go. After reaching 50 level you will give yourself a question. Which covenant will be best option for your PvP rotation? I'm not gonna go through all of them just to show best options in my point of view. And this will be of course Nightfly. Why Nightfly? Because first of all you will have Soul Shock, which is allowing you to escape or nuke the target with B. Second we have Sepsis. Sepsis allowing us to damage target with 8395 natural damage over 10 seconds, which is very big amount in my point of view for one spell. But if enemy will survive full duration, Sepsis will make additional 3130 damage and give us possibility to hit target once from stealth over 5 seconds. And cooldown of the spells is just 30 seconds, which is insane in my point of view. Next passive spell from Covenant will be Wild Sea. This Covenant passive spell will work when you will receive metal damage and you are about to die. But Covenant will place you in Wild Sea for few seconds. This moment you will need help from your teammates to control enemies and don't let them kill your Wild Sea before you are regenerated. After few seconds you will respawn with 30% of HP and you can continue to fight. After choosing Bright Covenant, now let us speak about poisons. We have here four types of poisons and they are Deadly Poison, Crippling Poison, Dumbic Poison and Wound Poison. So in most of the situations we will use passive combination of Deadly plus Crippling. But before Arena Games will start, you must switch it depending on who will be your enemy. And then you will decide which will be right poison. For example, if we are playing against him with healer, we will use combination of deadly poison plus crippling poison. And I will explain why. In 2022, in patch 9.2, Shadowlands is allowing us to have thermotoxin poison in our PvP talent tree, which is decreasing heal against target by 40 percent for 9 seconds. And it can be applied on target with shield. Once we have information about bright poisons, let us speak about specializations. This is a talent field which I am using for my assassination role only for PvP. First talent we will choose will be Master Poison, because most of the damage from assassination role is coming from poisons. Next talent we should take sub, which will allow us to hit target with still abilities for 3 seconds. Keep in mind that we are not gonna take Night Stalker, because we are not playing with sub -row. For sub Night Nightstalker is best option because of Shadow Dance. In third row I am using talent with name Vigo, because our main fighting ability which is called Mutilate is costing 50 energy. And because of this I prefer to have 178 energy instead of 168. Next talent I am choosing Elusivus and not gonna go for cheat pets, because we already have Wild Seed from our Covenant and this just gonna waste our potential of Assassin. In next row I will go for internal bleeding because it's applying bleeding effect on target for 6 seconds and giving more energy regeneration. For 45 level talent I'm taking Alak because it's giving 20% haste for 20 seconds and stacking up for 5 times. I want to remind you guys that for assassination row uh, haste is second stat priority after agility because uh, haste is increasing energy regeneration and decreasing cooldowns of, on, of our abilities. Also on 45 level we have a very interesting ability which is called Insanguinate and you should try to use it. And now for last option we will take Poison Bomb because in my point of view other two are just useless and there is even no point to try. Once we set our talent tree now we must decide what kind of gear will be for assassination best option. And answer is simple. A few seconds earlier when we choose Alacrity in our talent tree, as I said, after agility haste is second stat priority for Rogue, so 
of course we will go and take haste. Now we are almost ready to go, but we will need also rolled macros. Let us start with simple and pay most to everyone sub macros. I want to mention that all macros will be also linked in the description below. This macro will sub nearest enemy player who is out of the combat. If you will pay attention to macros, there is written in save draw that target enemy player, which means it's not gonna work on heads or simple monsters in open world. Second macro I want to talk about is Shadow Step, which is possible to set on teammate or on focus target. This can be very powerful macro if you will use it with timing. Just on proper usage of this macro can change your gameplay. For combination with Shadow Step, you can use Kick, Kidney Shot, Dismantle, and Shield. But I'm not gonna recommend it for Rapture because Shadow Step has 27 seconds cooldown and in that 27 seconds a lot of things can happen which will be simply changed with one nice and proper usage of shadow step macro third focus macro we will have kidney shot this can be also a very powerful macro if you will use stun to focus target for example behind the pillar so their teammates cannot save him instantly after full duration of kidney shot or just disable focus target for 5 seconds First of all, always ask your team members to not enter in combat before sub. This kind of important mistakes I saw in these days even on championship and I was really impressed because none of the commentators mentioned it in match analyze. Now let me give you a simple example how to focus healer on arena games. First, when arena games will start, your mission will be to take healer in focus. For that you can make fast focus macro and take target in focus with which will be pointed with mouse tool. After managing your focus, you must sub focus it to a focused healer and open on the target which you will decide with your team. If you will make good damage on target with your teammates, healer will use trinket to remove your full sub. But if something will go wrong, you must shadow step on healer and use full kidney shot on him. This will give to your teammates extra 5 seconds to low enemy and 90% uh, healer is using trinket in this situation. We, me we mentioned that healer will use trinket for 90% but let us take that 10% and let's say that he is not using trinket yet. In this case you must swap with your team member and let him use any kind of disable except stun. Because after kidney shot another stun will have very short duration. After your team members disable, he will use trinket for 100%, otherwise his member will die. Because he will be disabled for 20 seconds. And that is the moment when blind focus macro will be handy. During arena games there is also a very good DPS macro which is called Tricks of the Trade. Which can be casted on party member to maximize your DPS. And before we will go to end, I will show you my covenants for challenge trick. I'm not gonna go through all of them because depending on game style and you can set it depending on your game style. But I can say for 100% that Dreamwalker here is best option because it's giving you mobility, survivability and of course high DPS and healing. On this our assassination road guide is slowly going to finish line and I try my best to provide full information in this short video and I really hope it will help you out. Thank you so much for watching and special thanks to all of my viewers and subscribers for your continued support. Your interest in my channel is a big motivation for me to keep growing and improving. That's all guys and we will see each other in the next video.